one thing that I can't do and I won't do is argue with an adult about their decisions for their life. I can't do it. My patience just won't hold it. And I don't even understand the purpose of it because I don't want nobody doing it to me. Whatever decision I decide on, that's the decision. And you do yourself a favor by getting out of my face. And I'm like, come on through, cook in. I want to pull my soapbox. That's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. This is season eight, episode five. As I said, I ain't arguing with no grown folks for what I think is better for them. None of my business. I'm just want to mind my business. But anyway, this is what's going on. We got Tokyo and the personal trainer, which you know Tokyo. <clears throat> what I'm finding about Tokyo. Tokyo likes a little, uh, little felt little fella, okay? She was so much open to him. I said, oh, he's kind of cute. So she was over there grinning the skin and the smiling, and she was more receptive to him listening to the information about how she needs to, you know, work out and she needs to change her diet and all of those things. And she, she just didn't, she wasn't argumentative with him at all. She just wanted them people. It's one of them people. And then she kept on, she keeps saying, I don't want to hear nothing about nothing from nobody that been up on no table. Any of them girls that, that had surgery, I don't want to hear it. Now, there's some validity in that, but it's kind of mean. You being kind of mean, Tokyo. You know, it's not as though you don't realize that you're obese and overweight. Because you're not just overweight. You're actually obese, and you know it. And you know it. But why they want to push it, I don't know. If she's okay with it, baby, I'd be okay with it. I'm going to sit up arguing with her. Go, do you. Do you. It is what it is. I don't be sitting up arguing with nobody. They aggravate me so bad with this. I'm like, child, leave her alone. Shit. Crazy. Anyway. So next we got Shay Mac and her old her dude made man. They're a cute little little uh, couple with the little baby and everything. And um, Shekinah Joe ended up coming in after he left. It was his birthday. He was it his birthday? No, it was her birthday. It was her birthday. He had to leave early because he's working, and she was feeling some kind of way, you know. But she's like, you know, she do, he got to go to work. Child is what it is. So Shekinah Joe came in and they actually were talking and she was saying, you know, how she wanted to get back to DJ and, you know, and everything like that. And she didn't really know how to approach him with it and let him know what she wants to do, you know, because he's, I think, pretty settled and pretty okay with her being at home with their baby. And she kind of told her, we'll get you a nanny, but bitch, get you an old nanny, like 50. I said, girl, listen, hey, she kind of, bitch, you got to watch 50. Bitch, I'm almost 50. I'm almost 50. Come on in close. Take a look again. Hey, Shay, you better get you a 75-year-old motherfucking baby, okay? Because if you think, if you think that a 50-year-old don't know how to bust a uh, made man down, Girl, I'm going to tell you, girl, 75. Go for a 75-year-old nanny. 75. <laughs> okay? You want somebody's great-grandma. Because these days, grandma will give you a problem. Okay? I'm just saying. Anyway, <laughs> whatever. Y'all do what y'all want with that information. <laughs> whatever. Don't be no fool. Don't be no fool. 75 for the name. <laughs> anyway, move. <laughs> ah, moving on. Okay. So, next. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Anyway. 
first thing, <laughs> next we see Spice. She goes and sees Jock. And Jock just basically reconfirmed to Spice, you know, I think you're beautiful just the way you are. You know what I mean? And she explained everything to him. And he told her, you know, um, I get it. I get where you're coming from. But I want you to think this out really, really good. Once you completely think it out, if you think that this is going to work and it's not going to backfire on you, then I'll support you. It is what it is. I'm going to support you. I love Jock. You know, I, I just find Jock to be so genuine and so real. You know what I mean? Other than, you know, when he's doing his little slick stuff and wanting to screw around. But as far as just his person in general, I, I think Jock's pretty much a good person. He's just a really cool dude, you know? And he really did reiterate to... to that's the one thing that Spice keeps getting is that no, you don't have any really fake friends here. Everybody I think here really does care for Spice. And they're really telling her their real true feelings and they're really trying to, to make her see, like, girl, we want you to see what we see. We think you're beautiful. And she is. She's absolutely sharp. And it's like, we want you to see what we see, you know? But it is what it is. But I understand her point as well. But it is what it is. So I was like, all right, Jock. So then after that, we end up seeing Scrap and Jock and Kirk sit down. And uh, <laughs> Jock gets to tell them about Kendra. And it was funny because Scrappy was like, I didn't even know nothing about no damn Kendra. You have been hiding this from me, damn bastard. And then he's told me, yeah, there was a little bit of an overlap there. They told him, listen, you need to go ahead on and go to the party. Get in front of the narrative because you know how Carly is. And if you piss Carly off, Carly's going to get you into some shit and it's going to be a whole mess. In the meantime, between time, he told them about his little meeting with our girl, Spice. And then they confirmed there was more confirmation from the guys. They feel like Spice is beautiful. Like all of them think that Spice is just like this bad chocolate chick. And they, and you know, it was so funny because Scrappy's like, you know, Scrappy got a bad pass with not doing things he's supposed to, well, doing things that he ain't supposed to do. So Scrap ain't want to just come out and say, you know, I'll bang Spice out. But he just had this dumb look on his face like, yeah, Spice, yeah. I said, we understand, Scrap. We get it. <laughs> we get it. We know you ain't allowed to say it. But any of them will jump on Scrap on uh, Spice, honey, and get the pumping like a rabbit if they get a chance, honey. And that, that's what the, it was more reconfirmation. Girl, everybody, all of, everybody seeing the same thing. Everybody thinks she bad. You know, I'm like, okay. Anyway. So then we, um, Get this little meeting with Shekinah, Shay, Tokyo, and Sierra. Now, you know, Tokyo and Sierra ain't seen each other since they had that little blowout. And Tokyo, like, attacked Sierra, was pushing her and trying and put her out of her house. And they just start right back up again. Sierra is still, she's coming from a place of love. She really is about Tokyo. And she said, you know, you need to this, that, and the other. And then again, I get Tokyo's point. Tokyo's like, Sierra, fuck you, bitch. You jumped on a table and they cut the fat off you, bitch. Don't try to tell me nothing. And I get it. I get it. But I'm like, damn, Tokyo, you're so aggressive. Like, she's so aggressive and so angry. I'm like, girl, that's that, you know, whatever. I, I, Sierra, just leave it alone. Leave it alone. Shit. Let her do what she's going to do. That's on her. Anyway, moving on. Then we see Kirk. He goes to see Jasmine and her family, just like where she told him to. And um, they were telling him, wait a minute now. You coming in here and you got all these things to say about what's going on here with the baby and what ain't being going on. Let's talk about what you're doing. And you need to spend more time with the baby. How about that? So... Both on e both sides, y'all both lacking on something. So it is what it is. So they come to a little bit of agreement. So I said, okay, cool. 
After that, we see Shay. She she pops in on Made Man, and they talk a little bit. And she finally tells him, you know, she wants to go back to DJ and this, that thing, and the other. And it wasn't even no issue. He was like, cool. Um, they get all their little schedule issues settled, and they they good to go. It was it was no no issue at all. She was expecting a little fight from him. He ain't even fight. He like whatever, cool. No problem. I, I think we like Babe Man. Again, girl, you got to watch because we like him. Me Almost 50. 75-year-old <laughs> nanny girl. I ain't going to say it again. Anyway, moving on. Okay, so then Mama D and Cece sit down together. Baby, there's peace in the valley. Peace in the city. I said, no, they ain't made up. Yeah. They made up. <laughs> for the most part. And then Mama D's over there, and I said, Mama D, you bitch. Mama D don't trust her. <laughs> Mama, <laughs> Mama D don't trust Cece. She don't fucking like her. And she got her good fucking cut out on her ass. I said, I don't like that she gonna be living with Scrappy, but that's okay. I'm watching that bitch. <laughs> Watch her, Mama D. I don't fucking trust her either. She just seems shifty to me. I look at her and I said, bitch, she don't got a slick, honey. You keep watching her, Mama D. You watch her out of the left, girl, and I'll watch her out of the right. <laughs> I don't trust her, y'all. I don't. I'm with Mama D. I'm saying Mama D. I like Bambi, but girl, I don't trust your mammy. <laughs> she seems a little slick to me, honey. So Mama D's got the right idea, in my opinion. Y'all tell me in the comments what y'all think. I don't trust Cece. I'm team Mama D. <laughs> anyway, moving on. So then Spice and Mimi meet up. And Mimi takes her down to this uh, spot in Atlanta. That everything is very, very historic. And they go to like a little museum and all this. And she really gives her an American black history lesson. And it was really nice. Um, of course, they didn't see eye to eye. Again, coming from a place to love. But Spice was, you know, she already had her guard up. And she was combating some of the information. And it's like, I mean, come on, y'all, it is what it is. So, you know, it was fair. But Mimi, I, I just looked at it. And, you know, Mimi, a lot of times Mimi gets on my nerves with a lot of her bullshit. But Mimi, you could tell, is so genuine in this instance. Mimi really cares for Spice. She is, she does. She really cares for Spice. And she's arguing out of a place of love. She really is. And I was like, that's, this is nice to see this side of Mimi. Because, you know, I, I don't be half believing shit to come out of Mimi's mouth. But Mimi is truly here for the whole no colorism thing. She ain't feeling it. She ain't with it at all. That whole colorism thing. And I think that Mimi is fighting at. And she's not fighting with Spice. She's fighting at Spice. And I think it really is coming from a genuine place. And I like this Mimi. I do. I like this Mimi. But okay. Then we got to see Bambi deliver the baby, and it's a little boy. So that was really good and really happy. And then as the show was drawn to a close, Baby Spice went live, honey, and she was white as the wrapping, some of the wrapping on this damn water bottle. I said, woo, Miss Spice, girl. I was like, okay. So um, it kind of ended there. It's going to get deep next week, so I can't wait to see what's actually going on and what's going to go down, because every, they just showed, like, everybody in different places, and they all were, like, seeing that Spice was going live, and they was, ooh, I said, okay, mm. interesting, very interesting, but again, I think... I think the spice is bad. As a, well, I'm chocolate, so I don't have, and I've never had a problem with it. But I definitely have experienced colorism within my own family, within my own family. You know what I mean? So um, I've actually dealt with it with my children. You know, um, I told a little bit of the story before, but yeah, one of my kids is is my complexion. The other one is more fair skin but they actually look exactly alike. But just one is dark and one is light. And my darker one had this whole, he went through this whole thing where he wanted to be light like the other one. And I'm like, oh, no, we're not doing this shit. So I had to put it down in stone. Everybody got what they got and everything that everybody got is beautiful. We all black, all of us, because we all came down the pipe from Miss Thelma, honey. 
So it is what it is. But it, it wiped out. I was able to wipe it out of my house pretty quickly and pretty easily. But they were young. They were young. So I was able to get it early. Thank goodness. It was a blessing. It was a blessing. Um, but yeah, there's there's other people in my family that they never wiped it out of their part of the family. And they just all fucked up. And I don't fuck with them. Anyway, we'll be back on some of this. Y'all tell me what y'all think. Do y'all think that Spice is sharp? I think Spice is sharp. I, I didn't even like her when she was light. Because she don't look like she's supposed to be light. She's supposed to be chocolate. Chocolate. Just like she is. Anyway, put it in, in the damn comments and I'll talk to y'all next week. Later.